Hi, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and I am here with Yang Kwa Hu, the editor of Mass, Bram Kranz's new film. And, you know, the interesting thing about this film, which I assume must have provided a challenge for you, is that almost the entire thing is set in one room around one table. Um, so when you realized that was the setup for the film, what, what in your head was sort of the biggest challenge with that setup? Yeah, when I read the script, and then I didn't think about it actually, just because the story is so intriguing. So when you were reading it it's from the beginning to the end, just like, oh, I finished the reading. I said, oh, wow, this story is really good. The character, all very strong, and it moved me. And then I was like, oh, no, it happened in one room. So, so, so the first concern come up was that, well, but I saw the cast's name, and then I saw the footage. I was like, I have no concern, really, because uh, when the performance are so great, and then actors are so dedicated to the character and stay with the character, and then director and DP Ryan, they all do a great job capture the moment. So when I was cutting, I pretty much just let the footage spoke to me, and then I would just let it play and let it go. Um, and then sometimes I notice this when the dollar is so heavy, um, I tend to not just focusing on the people who's talking because it's a full character story. So I want to make sure everybody, everybody's involved in this conversation. So I found that very interesting from our actor is they are a really good listener. They react, they find words, they find their thoughts in the character. So I hear other character talking, but we see their face reacting, finding words, finding the meaning of finding what they meant in that moment. It create a different storyline than just a dialogue. So when I start cutting, I find this very interesting dynamic, especially from the beginning of the film, early on before uh, Gail was talking about, I want to know your son because he killed mine. Before that, everybody is just like, a, try to dance around, you know, like a, try to not talk about the elephant in the room. They are just like, the pressure, nobody won't touch the topic. They just talk about political issue, or talk about mental issue. You see there's a so just a awkward, dynamic, uncomfortable, try to find something to talk. It's, you can see the balloon is like constantly just like, a, you don't know when it's going to pop. And then that's how I thought, wow, okay. I have no concern. When I see the footage, I was like, well, we can make this work. And then since story is so good, actors sound to this point for everything, I was like, we got this. Yeah. Oh, that's It really does feel like a dance in that way, I think. Um, <laughs> the, the You do have uh, many moments where the camera really does not just a reaction shot, but really lingers on someone who is not talking as they're taking in the information. What, what is sort of the secret to a moment like that? What are you looking for in a take from an actor's reaction that makes you say, oh, that's, that's what we need there? I think it's about, same thing about re reaction, about the um, motivation. Um, I think Frank gave me a lot of freedom. Um, he let me uh, explore the footage and then he along uh, agree with me. If we stay on a character, we're able to find a new meaning of something. And especially sometimes when, because this is about victim and the killer family. So they always think everybody in, on the table all are victims. Nobody is a winner. They just try to find out what's the reason, what's going to happen, what's happening, and they don't know. And they are always try to find and understand. So when you stay on a character, when they are, when actor are in the character, you find it very interesting because they try to study or understand the situation, and you can see they agree or disagree. It's just like we are in the dinner table, even though you are going to interview, you're eating with a friend, with family, Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner, the, a, a sibling, or oh, a long time, the long distance family haven't seen each other for a long time. When you are sitting on a table, 
you start to listen to someone talking, but you can tell that person not really say something what it meant. And then you start to observing yourself or observing other people. It just intriguing me. Like I like to, when I have a big meal with family, because I grew up with a big family, I like to sit on the table eating and like being quiet and look at everybody. Because you're like, oh, that's interesting. This is uh, so many dynamic situations happening at the same time. And then, so I know a lot of people might talk about it. Well, this film can easily be a play, um, can really, because it's so one room and one stage thing. But um, since I think I have a, it really helped me because I have a theater directing background back in Taiwan when they're undergrad. Um, so it really helped me by like, okay, as an editor, I want to be, I want to help the audience eyes go. On the stage, I cannot control you. But on the film, I can do this. I can say, let's go to this character. Let's go to Gail. Let's go to Jay. Let's go to Linda. Let's go to Richard. They have all the dynamic in there. And then it's all about what's actually coming after. Like, I want to make sure when Gail burst out saying, oh, I, I want to know your son because he killed mine. Or when Jay was a pun on the table saying, no, you do not know how my son died. Mm -hmm. They need the bill. They cannot come in just like a, because the lines that we're going there. We need to have that pre bill of their anxiety. They are uncomfortable. They are just, I, I'm not here doing this. And Linda's perform. Linda's was like, I tried to understand, tried to accommodate everybody. She's been, she, when she walked in the door, she already feel that pressure from her ex-husband, Richard. It's like, don't say anything stupid. Don't, don't, just don't do anything. And then Jay being very aggressive. And Gail is just like, I, I, I don't really want to talk to mother to mother kind of situation mm -hmm. from the beginning. You can see that pressure. And Richard is like a, trying to be like a kind of typical kind of cold dad or cool dad soldier kind of feeling there and try to hold the table together. There's a four characters, so different kind of personality. And I found it very intriguing. So stay on them. It made me feel like I'm with them. And mm -hmm. I'm in the room as a viewer. Well, since you have that directorial background uh, from theater and you clearly uh, are thinking this way, I'll ask you about some themes because I, I talked to Jason Isaac recently and he was mentioning that he really believes, uh, was adamant that it's not really a story about the shooting and about grief. It's about these people trying to move past it with, with hope uh, for a better way forward. Um, how, as you're cutting it, how do you think about the themes of this piece? Do you have your own uh, elements of that that you're bringing to it? I think early on stage, I did every time I actually every cut every time I cut a scene, I was asked for an answer, who sings this? What is this is about? And then we start to realize this whole thing. The whole movie is not about, we're not talking about mental issue. We're not talking about gun control. It is a part of the issue. But this is other film to address. It's a whole other film. We can't address those things. And it's very controversial. Everybody has their own thing. It's just everybody has their own opinion. And then we realize, and if I, when he writing the script and then we talk about this, it's the process of the grief is the forgiveness. But we are not trying to tell you what to do. Like, as a filmmaker, we are presenting the unimaginable possibility if you're able to put yourself into someone's shoes. Maybe, maybe you are able to understand more. I, I'm not saying you 100% agree, right? I mean, just, you might be able to understand, it might change you a little. Even just a little, it still helps. Because at a time when we make this movie, there's so much, the whole country is so divided. It's like it's really everybody is just kind of like have their own opinion. And then we all, when the pandemic hit and everything. So when me and friend were working on this, we're like, oh man, this is just so, it's a bigger picture. Like for, for this film, we're talking about forgiveness. We're talking about grief. 
But the bigger picture is this, we are like, we, if we can listen to each other, if we are willing to sit down to have the conversation, we might be able to understand each other better then we will have less of a negative energy or conflicts in the world. And that's what we need. We need, we, everybody would try to survive. We try to move on to our life. Then I think this story has a bigger picture on, on top of that. Like if we're willing to listen, willing to put yourself in that situation, it's very uncomfortable for sure. I, we are not any of them. We are not. But we are trying to see if it's possible, it might make the world better. It might make us feel better, especially the self, yourself. If you can live, move on, and then can have a hard to move on for sure. But it's like a, if you can try it, it won't, it won't hurt you. It's, it's, it, it might be painful, the process, but you might find something, some light in the inner tunnel. And then maybe that's what you've been looking for, like a the like character Gail, like even Linda Lee and come back. Linda the whole time saying I'm not afraid of my son, blah blah blah. In the end, she still come back. I'm so sorry. I should have let my son be me. And then that dynamic in there, oh, just like wow, this is an unimaginable situation. And then we put them together, and hoping we can reach out a certain kind of uh, people can feel something and then maybe able to listen to each other. Yeah. I know, you know, um, the actors, you know, are in one room. And so they're, they might be giving different interpretations of a scene and you're using so many reaction shots. There would seem to be so many ways to put together yeah. uh, a scene like this. So many ways. Uh, was there a lot of experimentation and sort of like, how long does it take you to find the, the rhythm and the edit that you want for a sequence? I think it's very intuitive. It's an instinct, I think. Um, when the actor, they bring the, they do their homework. They learn the background. They learn the character background. They know who they are, what the stake, what the arc in that particular scene. And you're able to like, okay, by seeing that, you know where we are and then what's their character. So we don't really have that many like a test test that say, oh, let's go to Gail, let's go to Jay. Maybe we'll feel, feel, feel different. No, uh, we are just four characters. They are always participant in the room. Then since there are four people are in there, we want to make sure they are all are involved in the conversation. So. It's not about try saying like, from this line, let's try to cut to Gail reaction, to J reaction or Linda Richard, and they will feel like anything different. It's not about that. It's about the situation, about the scene, about whose story is this? Who's the one trying to convince people? Who is the one trying to receive the message and defeat? So there's always a dynamic in there. And then when, when, for instance, when um, Gail wants to know about what was happening during the time, and then when Richard and Linda try to explain, when they hear a school call and, and the friend Alex call, and then with your son, and then they, they, Richard was driving by the, on, the, on, the, on the way home and parked the car, Jay did not want to listen to this, and Gail wants to. So when they're trying to describe the situation, you can hear the two dynamic. The other side of the table, killer side of family is try to find the word, find the, their memory in the back. So they have their moment in there. They are separated. They are kind of bonding, even though they are already divorced at time. But you can kind of see they still have like couples that like, oh, remember the time we tried to hold each other's hand, we couldn't because we separated. The other side of the table is. I don't want to hear this. Why do you want to hear this? And I do want to hear this. Where are you? So this is a very interesting the energy flow in the table. So I will say it's really the footage spoke to me and I'm able to kind of accept that instead of trying to like, oh no, I think this should be this way. 
and I go fight with the footage. Because a lot of time, I think uh, when as an editor, we try to let footage. Footage is the final product. So I mean, friends, I remember we just recently met up and he did mention like, well, if he knows, because it's the first feature, feature film, he knows that, well, if he knew this whole process earlier on, he probably would be more relaxed on set because he will realize something he really want on set is sometimes when you put footage together, those take you might not be able to use. And then we might be able to use other tape because it fits better for that scene because the character. And then he will, so I think that's how the beauty of uh, the editing is that in the, the end of post process, you have to look at the footage to know what you have is not what you imagine because that might fight against with your uh, orange, what you have in the posting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I wanted to make sure I ask you before we have to finish is um, there's one there's one shot, one of the only cutaways that you have uh, outside of the room is that shot of the the yellow fabric or ribbon that's ribbon, uh, yeah. hanging up the the post there uh, of the fence, and it, it just seems like um, it takes us out of the room and it seems to carry a lot of weight. What was the significance of that for you of including? that cut away? It was written in the script. Uh, it was part of a script uh, description. And then I think originally, Fran thought was to stay on the EO the whole time, mm -hmm. uh, doing Jason, Jason's uh, dialogue. Um, the purpose of this whole thing is about giving our characters the privacy, uh, because we feel like none of us uh, are them, we don't want to trigger any, this film shouldn't be uncomfortable, shouldn't be hurting you, it should be a healing. So by using, if we're using the traditional Hollywood, Hollywood style, we're, we're like, well, we'll go to the flashback, we'll go to the event itself, we go to that, that. it's very darning, very scary. I mean, as a viewer, if you don't, uh, people don't been through, haven't been through this, so we'll hope nobody been through this, this is terrible. But we just don't want to hurt anybody. So we want to keep our parents' privacy. So we don't want to reveal nothing. So actually original cut, we never come back to the room. It stay on the field. Um, and we did a test screening and then realized people dying or eagering to see everybody, how desperately, how, how they are doing in there. So we need to go back to change it. And then we try to figure it out what's the appropriate way, how much we can do. And then we know, because we have been on the, the room the whole time, also then we we'll cut to the field. It's a relief. Everybody, like, oh, come on, finally, we can take a breath. And it's that same way. And the people will have a question to ask, what does that mean? Because it's such a very, like, it's not the score itself, it's not, and it's just an image Jay saw before he went to the church to have a meeting. We'll try to find a meaning for it. For us, we really feel like, what do audience feel like? What do they see? What do they feel? There's no absolute answer for it. Because for us, for Jay, Jay was the one seeing it first as a character, when he sees a ribbon down flying over the, on the fence, it's a time when she tried, when he tried to convince Gail, said, do, 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 if you don't want to go in, we don't need to go in, we can go home, we can stop the meetings. But then when the ribbon was flying, if something could, something might happen there before, like sometimes when you see the bike accidents or something, oh, they have a flower right next to the fence or something, it's just something like that kind of symbol. So the ribbon is flying, it's like, a, the energy, the life maybe is his son. It means something for Jay himself. Maybe not mean something for the audience self, but it means something for Jay. That's why when Jay is saying, you do not know how my son died, we go to that image because we are with Jay. That means something for Jay. But does that mean something when you, the a viewer watching it and feel something? Then that's the your answer. That's what we think, yeah. Very powerful. Well, 
Thank you so much for sitting uh, and discussing this film with me. If you're out there watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. There are many more interviews like this throughout the season. And Yanghua, thank you so much again for sitting with me. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.